I also noticed you changed a, a term in your budget work. Uh, you shifted from in places from using the term mother to birthing people rather than mother. Can you help me get a good definition of birthing people? Well, I, I'll, I'll check on the language there, but I think if we're talking about those who give birth, I think we're talking about, uh, I, I don't know how else to explain it to you other than... I, it ex- I was a little taken back when I just read it and saw it, that it's that the term mother was gone in spots and it was replaced with birthing people. And I didn't know if this was a direction that you were going, if there were shifts, if there are regulatory changes that are happening related to that or what the purpose of that is. Uh, I think it's probably, and again, I, I'd have to go back and take a look at the language that was used in the budget, but I think it, it simply reflects the work that's being done. But would you at least admit calling a mom a birthing person could be offensive to some moms uh, that they don't want to get like a happy birthing person card in May or, I mean, can you at least admit that that term itself could be offensive to some moms? Senator, I'll, I'll go back and take a look at the, the, the terminology that was used and, and I can get back to you. But again, if we're, we're trying to be precise in, in the language that's used. Mom's a pretty good word. That's, that's worked for a while and I think that's pretty precise as well. Mr. Becerra, good to see you. And um, good to be able to check in with you again since then. There, I, I sent a request to your office that I've not received a reply on. So I just want to be able to remind your team on a request. It deals with uh, the unaccompanied children coming across the border and some of the data that we've requested. We know this is data that is collected. I've been down to be able to visit in three different areas, some of the HHS facilities along the border in the last three months. I know all this data is collected, but we're not able to get access to it. For instance, the number in percent of category one, two, and three sponsors for the UACs, uh, the ages of the UACs, um, there's a record that's kept of how many have been sexually assaulted on their journey and how we're providing medical care for those. None of those things we've been able to get access to, though we've made numerous requests. Can you help us actually get that done? Uh, we're not asking for extraneous information that's not already collected. We're asking for the information you already have. Senator, let me get back to my team and find out where that request is on your letter that you sent to us. That'd be very helpful. Thank you. Uh, At your nomination hearing, um, you and I talked about the conscience and freedom uh, and uh, freedom of faith, um, all those protections that are there. I was surprised to see the language in the budget has stripped out much of that language uh, that had existed in previous budgets about freedom of conscience, freedom of religion. Um, And it also seems that you're eliminating the conscience and religious freedom division. Is that true in your budget? Are you eliminating the conscience and freedom, uh, religious freedom division? We are gonna continue to do the work to protect the religious, civil, constitutional rights of all Americans under HHS's purview, and uh, we are gonna continue to be a solid organization through the Office of Civil Rights that we have to make sure that we're protecting everyone's rights, including religious conscious rights. But you, you're taking away that division as a priority and putting it under something else, or where is it going? Oh, it, it, it continues to function. The work continues to be functioning under the Office of Civil Rights. Okay, so it has not changed or it has changed? The work will not change. I mean, we continue to have a responsibility to protect the religious freedom of all Americans when it comes to any of the health care programs that are out there. We will continue to provide protections for the civil constitutional rights of all Americans, including those that uh, involve religion. Uh, And so nothing there changes. Okay, we'll follow up on that in the days ahead to be able to see how that office moves and how that shifts. I also noticed you changed a term in your budget work. Uh, You shifted from, in places, from using the term mother to birthing people rather than mother. Can you help me get a good definition of birthing people? Well, I'll I'll check on the language there, but I think if we're talking about those who give birth, I think we're talking about, uh, I I don't know how else to explain it to you other than... I was a little taken back when I just read it and saw it, that it's that the term mother was gone in spots and it was replaced with birthing people. And I didn't know if this was a direction that you were going, if there were shifts, if there are regulatory changes that are happening related to that or what the purpose of that is. Uh, I think it's probably, and again, I, I'd have to go back and take a look at the language that was used in the budget, but I think it, it simply reflects the work that's being done. Oh, I, oh, I definitely get that. I would, I would only say, the language is important always. We don't want to offend in our language. I get that. But would you at least admit calling a mom a birthing person could be offensive to some moms, uh, that they don't want to get like a happy birthing person card in May? Or I mean, can you at least admit that that term itself could be offensive to some moms? Senator, I'll, I'll go back and take a look at the, the, 
the terminology that was used, and I can get back to you, but again, if we're, we're trying to be precise in, in the language that's used. Mom's a pretty good word. That's, that's worked for a while, and I think that's pretty precise as well. Uh, in 2005, NIH paused funding for the human-animal hybrids uh, chimeras, and you're familiar with the term and have done research back around that and are aware that China is now advancing in chimera work. 2015, NIH paused and said, we're not going to do that. Is NIH going to continue that moratorium, or are you going to lift the moratorium and attempt to use tax dollars, federal tax dollars for chimera research here, or to fund chimera research in other countries? So I know that NIH has taken a close look at uh, where it's placing its money, the type of research that's being used. I think you'll understand and respect the fact that uh, we give NIH a great deal of latitude uh, because they, they take action based on the science, not on the politics. And so uh, you'll understand when I say to you that what NIH will do tomorrow is not because the Secretary of Health and Human Services has told them to go in a particular direction. It's because the science takes them there. And I can get, we can make sure we give you a better response more directly by NIH on where they plan to go. But I would, I would not want to infer to you that I could I will dictate to NIH what they will and will not do. Please be glad to be able to get that information back because this, this, is, this is not just a science, this is an ethics and moral issue as well.